Shalom and good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. In Matthew 16, verse 16 said, Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Then, what about you? Jesus asked you, Who do you say I am? As for me, Jesus is my friend. What a friend we have. In Jesus. This morning, let us worship King Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you and, and also with you. I was glad when they said unto me, Let, let us go, go to, to the, the house, house of the Lord. Lord. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the Almighty Savior. Savior. God is spirit. We, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. truth. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise
Today is the Sunday before Lent. Let us pray the collect for today together. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not 
looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, do, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus according to St. Matthew chapter 16 verses 13 to 20. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples, not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning again and Happy Chinese New Year for all our brothers and sisters in Christ as we gather this morning to worship the Lord on the Lord's Day. So as we come into the Word of God, let us ask God to speak to us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your Word again. Continue to speak to us as we listen, paying attention to you. Holy Spirit, visit the homes or wherever your children are right now, and that we may together be anointed and empowered through the sharing and listening of the Word of God. Thank you for visiting us and also speaking to us. Let us be doers of the Word of God. For your honor and glory, we give thanks and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as we continue to focus on our season of realignment, allow me to recap again. What is the whole purpose of focusing on this season of realignment? The bottom line is that it is a discipleship where the end purpose of discipleship is that we may become like Jesus so that we can fulfill the great commission by obeying the great commandment through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit here in Sindaka and beyond. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, the question is, uh, why? Yeah? Why do we need to continue? Well, this is what we are going to look at as we focus on today's theme known as Know the Christ. Yeah? Last week, we already looked at Ignite with Love, where we are reminded to ignite with God, to ignite with God's love, to ignite with God's word. And today we want to focus on the whole issue of know the Christ. 
we need to know the Christ on a personal level, in our own individual life, not just corporately, but personally. Remember last week I talked about Peter being reinstated by Christ, where it is a process Christ initiated uh, to align Peter back to himself so that Peter can really feel and experience and, and encounter the love of God more personally. So, in order to be like Christ, in order to follow Christ, it calls for a loving, trust relationship with Christ. And this, we need to focus by looking at this topic, know the Christ. And this morning, there are four points, sub-points that I'd like to share with you. And the first one is Christ and His revelation. Now, many of us know the meaning on the word Christ. Today, it's translated into our modern days English, right? Christ is a Greek word, Christos, but translated into modern day English as King. The question still remains, is Christ really King of our lives? Personally, practically speaking, well, we may say, yes, He is my King, but in our daily life, what is it like? And also we may ask, does it really matter whether we know it or not? Well, of course it does matter. Then you may ask, why? Now remember what Todd White said at the end of last week's sermon, whereby if people don't see Christ in us, they don't want to have what we have. Now, this is a very important statement, brothers and sisters in Christ, because to be like Christ, right, as a disciple of Jesus, our ultimate goal is to let people see Christ in us as we reflect Christ's life and that people may know Christ as well. So we also noted how uh, Todd White really aim to bring people to Christ and we also see how he did it by sharing by expressing uh, the love of God and he did it through prayer and he, he take opportunity to see people not well physically right who need some kind of a touch of God and thought quite took the opportunity to reach out to them remember how he ministered to this a person called Shaheen, right, who has a knee a problem and walking difficulties and in pain. What really convicted Todd to jump into action and do it? I believe it is because of Todd White's personal relationship with Christ. It began at the point when Christ revealed to him in a manner Todd White encountered him. Not only that, eventually we see how Todd White surrendered his life fully to Christ and how God turned him around from a drug addict for more than 20 over years and to become a servant of God as an evangelist. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what is important is this, that acknowledging the kingship of Jesus in our relationship with Him will impact our lives to the point that whatever we may be doing, all that will reflect Jesus to the point people can see Christ in us. Not only that, prayerfully, like taught why will impact and influence others, people, want to see Christ in us somehow. So Jesus, in his journey with the disciples now, uh, went to this place, 
right, right up at the north called Caesarea Philippi. And uh, verse 13, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. We have noted that, and it was, this Caesarea Philippi is also popular for one particular place, all right? The place where Panias, which is a, 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 an idol, the worship, if half God, it half goat and half man. And for that matters, my brothers and sisters, uh, Philip changed that name of the place into Caesarea Philippi. But what is important is that after Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that he is? They came back with different answer. But what I want to draw your attention is verse 15b. Jesus then direct a question to the 12 disciples very individually by asking them, who do you say I am? I know people think that I'm Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets, but who do you say that I am? All right, what do you think? What about you? And well, as usual, we noted the spokesman Peter, all right, answered that question very prophetically, very profoundly. In verse 16, Peter said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And this is very important, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm trying to draw your attention to this point. It may sound great that Peter has scored a plus in his answer but that is not the point it is not the right answer that matters here all right why because the point we want to see is the father's revelation of the son this is what we want to take note right in matthew 16 verse 17 look what jesus said to simon okay simon Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father who is in heaven. What is important is that the Father has been revealing Jesus as his son in two other occasions. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, when Jesus was baptized after his baptism as he came up from the water there was a great sound right that declared this is my beloved son and then the other occasion okay for three particular disciples of Jesus is known as the event of transfiguration on mount all right and uh, in Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 to 5 now Brothers and sisters, what is important is that Peter's declaration of who Jesus really is is an accurate revelation of the Father. And this is what we need to do, take note. Peter said it very, very clear. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And this is a powerful, powerful high point of Matthew 16. What is important is that we all need to have this revelation as well. That is why I said it is not a matter of whether we are born in a Christian homes, we are baptized or confirmed, but it is a matter whether we, we have come to this conviction all right, upon the revelation, the understanding that come from God of who Christ really is. This is the point. It is not becoming a religious person. It's more than that. It's more than that. It is to know who is Jesus in relating to us. And we need to know his true identity. All right, we need to understand his real person as the Messiah or the Christ or the King 
or you want to put into a moderate, he is the boss. Friends, look at Paul's encounter with Christ. Paul has a very strong personal encounter with Christ. We all know that as recorded in Acts chapter 9. But more importantly, in what he said to the church in Galatia, Galatians chapter 1 verses 15 to 16a, Paul said, But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me that I may preach Him among the Gentiles. See that? He had received a revelation of Christ the Son. And that his purpose is what? It's not for his own enjoyment, benefit, but he then used by God to proclaim Christ to the Gentiles. What about us today? Have we really, really come to this personal encounter yet? I believe some of you have experienced it. But what about the rest? If you have not, my brothers and sisters, I'd like to encourage you, think about this, right? Think about this. It is so important that you and I must have that encounter, a revelation from God the Father. We pray like Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. You know, he wrote, Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesus. All right? I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. Wow! Isn't that what Todd White said to us? He, and he's not only saying that, but he has demonstrated that in his testimony. Brothers and sisters, let us also pray that more people will come to a personal conviction that Jesus is King. Not just our Lord, or, 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 or Saviour, or Redeemer, or Teacher, or Master, but also the King. Without this conviction that Jesus is the Messiah, the King, you miss a lot out. Don't stop all right, at baptism or confirmation. Grow each and every one of us. Let us grow closer to Christ. Know Him better. Follow Him as a disciple. Right? And we pray that God will grant us that opportunity to know Him deeply, personally. So Christ and His revelation. Now, knowing the Christ we need also to come to the second point, all right? Beside Christ and His revelation, the second point is Christ and our identification. Brothers and sisters, after Peter declare who Christ really is, let us to see another important matter. That is, Jesus publicly acknowledged that he is indeed the king, as Peter declared. That is very important, right? However, I want to highlight to you in Matthew 16 verse 20, all right, you will see Christ then commanded the disciples not to tell anyone, all right? Diam, diam. Don't say anything, all right? Don't review. What is the reason? It is because at that point of time, the disciples has not seen the big picture. They thought they got it right, but unfortunately, no. So therefore, Jesus wants to keep his true identity in the low profile first at that point of time. Nevertheless, through that declaration of Peter of who Christ is, then Jesus took the opportunity to reveal the true identity of his people 
in relation to Christ. Right? To all who are connected with Him, especially the disciples. What is important is that when we have the right revelation of Jesus as the Christ, we then know our identity in relation to the King Jesus. Let me repeat that. When we have the right revelation of Jesus as the Christ, then we would know our identity in relation to Jesus, our King. In other words, you and I <clears throat> will have our true identity in Christ, through Christ, by Christ. Let me explain. Yeah? Simon, that is Peter, all right? You notice that in verse 17, Jesus called him Simon, son of Jonah. Okay? Then Jesus said <clears throat> in verse 18a, and I tell you, all right, that you are Peter. That is how Peter got his name. Okay, this is like in the old days when Peter, uh, people are baptized, the priest normally give a new name to the baptized person. Now, here Jesus gave a name calling Simon, son of Jonah, Peter, or in Greek, Petros, which means stone or rock. And it sounds strange, right? <laughs> Why rock? Why stone? Why not something more glamorous? Uh, what, why not something more popular? David or, or, or Ezekiel or something like that. But Jesus gave Simon the name Peter. What is it all about? Friends, it is the right revelation of who Jesus is help Simon Peter to know his identity. Now remember in um, Peter's letter later on, he began to understand that is much, much later. All right? Peter wrote a letter to the churches okay, in different places who are suffering and he reminded them about Christ. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 5a, this is what Peter said, As you come to him, referring to Christ, as you come to Christ, the living stone, capital S, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to God, you also like living stones and are being built into a spiritual house. It was much later Peter understood as he was given a name called Petra, stone. If he is stone, all of us are stone who follow Christ. All who follow Christ are a piece of the rock, a piece of that stone because we were being built into the spiritual house. Now, having said that, brothers and sisters in Christ, Peter began to understand much later, okay, why Jesus gave him this name. So the point is this, our identification as the people of God's kingdom depends very much on God's revelation of Christ to us. We are Christian not because we are born in a Christian home, not because we uh, are baptized or confirmed or belong to a church or denomination. We are Christian as an identity because by virtue of the revelation bring us to our identity as followers of Christ by God's grace true faith in Jesus the Messiah.
What does Christian, the word Christian mean? The word Christ is in there for sure. All right, Christ and then I A N stand for I'm nobody. In other words, with Christ, I am a child of God. Without Christ, I am nobody. So therefore, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is very, very important. We must see Him as the most important person of our life. That's why we need to always refer Him back again and again. Right? We need to fall back. He is the person of reference. We need to measure ourselves with Christ. It is very, very important. Also, Peter later on mentioned not only that Jesus as the living stone, but in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, Peter say, Christ as the chosen, precious cornerstone. I'm not sure whether we all understand what is a cornerstone. All right? A cornerstone is an important point whereby to see the alignment, whether the line of connection is straight or not, depending on the cornerstone, the whole structure of any building. So Christ being given the name cornerstone and we are the living stone built into the spiritual beauty. So the whole purpose is to see that we must never think that the church belongs to the priests, the pastors, or the lay leaders, or cell leaders, or any, any leaders. No. The whole church belongs to Christ and Christ alone. My dear brothers and sisters, this is important for us to measure, to evaluate, to see any church leaders, all right, is really in full alignment with Christ or not. Are the, is the church leaders, leadership leading us to where God wants us to be or not? And this is vital because Christ is the cornerstone. We are just one of the stones. None of us is more important than Jesus. The most important person that we must remember is Jesus Christ, Jesus the King. It is important to see our identity, all right, by checking our relationship with Christ the King. That is why I say build on your relationship and the Word of God. So when you see all this, we want to always remember how to make ourselves in line with Christ. That's why I call the season of realignment. Now, alignment and realignment is a lifelong process. All right? Last week, I shared with you about my own journey. I was never perfect. I made a lot of mistakes. I have disappointed God and disappointed a lot of people. But what is the important thing is we need to realign. And even I believe my own uh, journey recently last year with uh, having been infected with COVID-19, God has a purpose behind it. God has a reason behind it. Whatever it is, I believe God brought me to that awareness uh, where I was broken down and I repented and I had to turn back to God. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, in your relationship with Christ, are you aligned with Him as King of your life? Is He really the master of your life? How do you and I relate to Him today? Personally? Corporately? Right? That is for you to reflect. Know the Christ by knowing that Christ and His revelation. Secondly, knowing Christ and our identification. Thirdly, know Christ and our foundation. Now, this is very important. What do I mean by Christ and our foundation? You see, 
from the revelation, right, and the identification, when these two are put together, Christ revealed to us, and we identify ourselves with Him, we are connected with Him, this will become the foundation. This will become the foundation. When we are connected with Christ, when we are united with Christ, and Christ being our King, and we are His subject, we are His people, we are following Him, we are His servants, then Jesus said this in Matthew 16, verse 18b. He said, And on this rock I will build my church. Now, there is one common understanding thinking that the rock is referring to Peter, but let us see as we go along whether that is what Jesus meant. Alright? Now, the foundation actually begins with God's revelation of Christ and then God's identification of us in Christ. Alright? That is the foundation. Why? You see, the foundation of God's church is built on the solid rock. What kind of rock? Okay? It comes from the hearts of obedience as followers of Christ. Based on Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 24 to 27, talk, where Jesus talked about the wise. Who are the wise people? They built their house not on the sand but on the rock. And so with this, we will see that the church as the people of God who have relationship with Christ will build. The whole church is being built on this particular foundation of loving obedience to His Word. This is what Christ really meant. On this rock, meaning on the right foundation, grounded in the Word of God, in relationship with God, that we are built up. So, when we have the right and true knowledge of Christ, it will affect us, the manner we live our lives. Okay? We no longer do things we think we want to do it our ways. Okay, some people are like that. But rather to do it according to God's ways, according to God's plans, according to God's purposes. We will see more of this. Then we want to see the church. The word church, in Greek word, it is called ecclesia. The core out. It is not a building, but rather ecclesia in its actual meaning is a reference to the congregational uh, or the congregation of people, the gathering of people. It's not the building, all right, or any uh, organization or institution. All right, ecclesia or the church actually is referring to the people. Now the backdrop to this word ecclesia, based on the Greek uh, Old Testament, the Septuagint, in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 16, okay, the use of ecclesia is referring to the congregation of Israel as God's people. Right? As God's people, under His kingship. And this is where we must come back to this original meaning that the church today, you and I, this regard of our language, be it the indigenous or the Chinese or the English speaking or Indian or whatever, we are the people of God's kingdom. That is the real church. Okay? To the revelation of Christ which affirm our identification in Christ. So, having said that, we want to see that when Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church, 
Jesus is saying first and foremost, He Himself, as the Christ, as the King, all right, I will build. The King will build His church. Secondly, the church become the community of followers of Christ, or as you may like, Christians. Right? Christians are God's people, the community of Christ. Finally, the rock. The rock is the foundation based on the revelation of Christ and our identification with Christ. Jesus builds his kingdom, his church in this manner. Well, one simple illustration we look at the kingdom community in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2. I just simplify this. All right. Christ's kingdom began later on with about 120 people. Acts chapter 1 verse 15. And Peter being the so-called de facto leader, yeah, under the influence uh, of the Holy Spirit, he made a proclamation to find a replacement for Judas so to complete the number of 12 apostles and in uh, Acts 1.26 we read Matthias was chosen to replace Judas now what happened next after that as Christ has commanded them to wait in Jerusalem for the power to come upon them in chapter 2, the spirit of the king was poured out, all right? The Pentecost upon Christ's Messianic community of 120. And the rest is history. We know the expansion of Christ's kingdom is spread out from there. Imagine how important, all right, it is to have our identification, right identification. Why? Just imagine, brothers and sisters, if every member come to this point of understanding, yeah? And uh, you just imagine how COGS in Sindakan will make an impact, all right? Under Christ the King. Now you may ask me, is that possible? All right? Of course it is possible one condition all of us must be convicted of God's revelation through Christ and our identification in Christ so that we have the foundation where God will going to build us up raise us up as his people for his glory Last month, January 2021, a member of the church spoke to me about this. He said, Canon, the Lord is raising an army to execute His kingdom and purposes, such as the vision in Ezekiel 37. You as the pastor, our senior pastor, will need to have a paradigm shift, a change of way of pastoring the church, raising up the army of God, the people of the kingdom of God to establish God's kingdom in Sinakan. Who? This is really, really a powerful uh, uh, word to me personally. Well, if we know the Christ, with Christ and His revelation, which bring about Christ and our identification and which establish with Christ and our foundation. We move on finally. Christ and His authorization. Brothers and sisters, Jesus announced His delegated authority in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth 
and will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus said to Peter, I will give you the keys. I mean, I will. At that point of time, all right? At that point of time, who do you say I am? And then all that conversation, at the end, Jesus said to Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, when did the key come? Surely, very likely, as we can see in the scripture, the key was given to Peter and the rest on the Pentecost day. Now, why key? Keys are symbolic of authority. Keys are symbolic of authority. And they are given, the keys are given on the basis of revelation. For example, when our children, right, for those of you who have children come to the age of 16, 17, or 18, and they are able to have friends, or they may go out and come home, surely we all give them the house key, don't we? Similarly, Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter and all his followers. Now, why did Jesus use the phrase keys of the kingdom? We need to come back to this picture. Okay? Uh, it, keys is like key to unlock or lock a padlock or the door. All right, if you like that. So normally, it's given to us, all right, to when a key is given to enter the house, then the key can unlock the door. Or when you leave the house, you use the same key to lock the door. This is what it is. When Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, basically, Jesus is talking about his authority and power to rule. How do we understand this? You need to look at Isaiah 22 verse 22. Alright? I will place on his shoulder, whose shoulder? Jesus, to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shut, no one can open. Now this is in the Old Testament, which was prophesied. And then the last book of the Bible, Revelation 3, 7, which recorded, these are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. It speaks about what? The authority and power of Jesus to rule as king. He has the power. He is in control. He is in charge. The function of the keys have to be understood from God's kingdom perspective. And let us look at this tree, a uh, small sub-point again. The function of the keys first is entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Now the qualification to enter God's kingdom is by God's righteousness and holiness according to God's ways and will. Not our will, not our ways, not our standard. Now, Ben, if you look at that as the standard of the kingdom of heaven, no one is eligible to enter the kingdom of God. I've said that we don't deserve. But Thank God, God make it possible through Christ and in Christ. This is what we want to look at. It is by God's grace, true faith in Jesus. Remember Ephesians 2 verses 5 and 8. And having been brought into God's kingdom salvation, it is also important to work on the process of 
growing in our relationship with God. It is this working out of our salvation, not just being saved and that's it, but rather having been saved, you have your sins forgiven. We all know we all need to grow. We, there is a lot of transformation to take place. That is why I say we need to realign and realign. The more we realign, the more we discover our misalignment. And that is the truth. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, that's why Paul in Philippians chapter 12, verse uh, chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, where he encouraged us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this will require us to continue not to undermine God's grace and salvation. And we have to uh, continue to work together with God. As God initiates our realignment, we may be able to continue. That is why Paul gave us warning to be careful after we have come to experience the grace of God, the goodness of God, the salvation, then we must change our old lifestyle. We must live no longer in the flesh, in the worldly manner. All right, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Okay, and it calls for our faithfulness. It calls for our steadfastness to continue to live in God's holiness and righteousness. Secondly, the interpretation of the scripture, the right understanding of the Bible is very important. The keys to the kingdom of heaven depends very much on the truth and the scripture. It calls for our understanding of God's word correctly. I'm, I am very concerned some people love to listen to certain preachers who talks about grace and need not to repent of our sins anymore it is a lopsided teaching and preaching but nevertheless today what is important here is to know how to understand the principles of god's word and to apply it accordingly, right? It is important to submit to the authority of God's word. Now, what does Jesus mean when he say that, you know, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Allow me to quickly explain this. It must be seen in the context of Matthew 18, verses 16 to 18. This has to do with believers who refuse to repent when they are found with problems which they know they should not be doing. All right? In our church, we have all these kind of problems too. And very sad to say, there are some people, after much persuasion, they still refuse to repent. Now, what do you do with this kind of people? Well, Jesus said, this is where the binding and loosing come. If they refuse to repent, Jesus said that, treat them like tax collector. We have to disassociate with people like with all due respect to that. If people refuse to change, refuse to follow, refuse to submit to the authority of God's word, then Paul clearly say, have nothing to do with such people. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, for those of us leaders, myself is included, all right? Uh, teaching God's word needs to be watchful ourselves that we would not be a stumbling block to others. This is why Jesus warns, all right? 
the Pharisees and lawyers in Luke 11 verse 52, leaders are entrusted with God's word to teach others so to give them the key to true knowledge of God so that people have a revelation of Christ. And we should be uh, teaching to impart true, correct knowledge of God's kingdom and His people. No compromise. And all of us, including myself, are under the authority of God's law. Brothers and sisters, the third thing, all right, about the key, the function of the key. First, entrance into the kingdom of God. Second, interpretation of the Bible. And thirdly, the spiritual authority. Okay? I've already mentioned that Jesus built his people, the church, and trusting and delegating his authority through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this empowers God's community to overcome demonic spirits and its works. That is what Jesus said in Matthew 16 verse 18c. The gates of Hades will not overcome it. Even the threat of physical death will not overcome Christ's community, Christ's disciples. Why? Because we have the delegated authority over death by the power of Christ's resurrection and the gift of eternal life with God. This is our spiritual authority. Now, of course, we need to fully understand in relation to the power of darkness, the demonic spirits, Christ's authority is given to us by casting out demons and their activities. Alright? Mark 16, verse 17. For Christ's death and resurrection actually disarmed the devil and his power. So whenever we, we declare by faith on the conviction of the power of God's word against any demonic activities or the demonic spirits, it is not our authority, brothers and sisters, is the authority delegated to us from Christ based on His truth that we can cast out demons and to uh, stop them activities against the people of God. For this we know Christ has already defeated the power of darkness, the devil once and for all in Colossians 2, 15. Complete, all right? complete therefore my brothers and sisters for all of us who are born again we need to keep on learning and growing as followers of Christ we will no longer subject to the influence of the demonic forces nor to give in to their deceptions because we have Christ's authority in us today we have Christ power in us through the Holy Spirit. We all receive the baptism, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How do we exercise this spiritual authority? Number one, being vigilant. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We need to be watchful. We need to uh, stay alert. We need to be awake, knowing what the devils are doing nowadays. Secondly, Right? Resisting always. James chapter 4, verse 7, where we learn that we have to resist, and the Bible says the devil will flee. Whenever we resist, we must resist and not give in. Then the devil will flee. Finally, putting on the whole armor of God, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20. It is not putting on the armor, my brothers and sisters, but rather live the life of Christ. Live like Jesus. And this is what we need to understand the authorization of Christ. Yeah? My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is what it means to know the Christ as we continue to realign ourselves. I want to end with this question. 
Is Jesus the king or not? I don't think that is the issue anymore. What is important now is, is Jesus my king? Is Jesus your king? This is what we need to think about. Do I really mean it? Do I really follow Jesus not only as a saviour, not only as a, a redeemer, but also as our king? This is what we need to work out as we continue to learn the process of becoming like Jesus. So what does it mean for us to know the Christ today? It is a lifelong process of learning, all right? Beginning with what Christ has revealed of Himself and that we have identified ourselves with Him and being grounded in Christ firmly as our foundation. We too are authorized by Christ to fulfill the Great Commission by obeying the Great Commandment in the power of the Holy Spirit. To know Christ, we need to know Christ and His revelation. To know Christ, we need Christ and our identification. To know Christ, we need Christ and our foundation. Finally, to know Christ is, all right, we need to know Christ and His authorization. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for your guidance. Lord, as we are still learning and we are processing all this, help us, Lord, to learn step by step. Help us now to know Christ more intimately, deeply, correctly, and to appropriate every truth from the Scripture. Help us to draw out the principles and to live by the principles that we may be blessed by you and to walk in the power and authority of Christ, that we would really show Christ to others as people can see Christ in us for your honour and glory. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. We know we are not perfect, but we thank you, Lord, you are helping us. For your honour and glory, we give thanks and pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed together to declare our Christian's faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, we have a few un important announcements. Firstly, regarding our annual general meeting. The e-electoral roll and the e-nomination form will be sent out to all the PCC member, lay leaders, care group leaders through WhatsApp. Please click on the link to check your name and telephone number. I strongly encourage the English congregation to get involved with the special AGM through online. Then in that particular form, please mark that you are attending the meeting and write your email address. As for the PCC election, if you are called to nominate someone, please do so by getting that personal consent, their personal consent and the second. Let us pray that the Lord Jesus show a person who fear God and ready to serve God. Secondly, the Ash Wednesday 
and the Hon- Holy Communion online service on Wednesday, 17 February at 8 p.m. There's a few important notes. Firstly, please get ashes and the Holy Communion element at our resource center from 15 to 17 February, 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. Remember, please use the ashes that the church provides. Do did do not use the ashes from your walk. Remember, uh, please use the ashes that the church provide. Secondly, for the head of the family, please get a video on how to impose ashes from your cell group leaders. Okay? And thirdly, prepare your heart and your family in preparation for the fast and prayer for 40 days. Finally, in Philippians chapter 2 verse 2 say, Then make a joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. This verse is advise us to be united and humble like Christ. Even though we are great in this world, we still need to humble ourselves to serve together. God bless you all. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the power of prayer given to all your disciples. Thank you. Prayer is a powerful weapon to tear down the stronghold of the evil one. Your given source of strength for us to face trials and crises, and also is an effective medicine against sickness. With such confidence, this morning we pray for Afghanistan and Taliban. Living in violence, sufferings, and deaths as a result of the continuous war for two decades, we pray for your divine intervention to set them free from this bondage of damaging warfare, which had robbed them of peaceful and healthy living. We pray, Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace. To put an end to these destructive wars, we pray for your righteous power to break down the strongholds of hatred and revengeful spirits in them, set them free from the bondage of the evil one, and help them to turn to you for peace and freedom. For our nation Malaysia, thank you, Lord. Our country is recognized as a maritime. Nation, due to its strategic geographical location in the center of trade shipping lanes, we pray for the Royal Malaysian Navy, who is responsible for the country's maritime and surveillance and defense operations. We pray all officers and members of the navy to perform their responsibilities. With total serious commitment and diligence, to ensure safe and peaceful sea traveling in Malaysian waters, so that this maritime industry will continue to prosper. For our daughters, we pray for the Church of Kings Shiok in Pinangang. Pray for Reverend Lim Ching Liang and his family, the missionaries and the pastoral team. And all who are actively involved in church ministries, that they will continue to proclaim and be witnesses for Christ in their area. Pray for wisdom to prepare the online services and the weekly cell group meetings, to unite the congregation together, and to keep their faith, even they are not able to meet regularly as before. Pray that they will observe SOP regulations in their visits to districts. For our church, COGS, we pray for the priests, pastors, and all staff during this MCO period. Lord Jesus, we pray that they will not slow down and be hindered in their ministries. Pray that this lockdown period. Be a season of reflection and renewal on their spiritual lives. Reveal to them with new visions and insight. 
to restructure their ministries with new approaches, so that the work of the gospel can still continue effectively. Pray also for the Logos Zone leaders and members to be faithful in the Word of God and to maintain the close relationship with constant encouragement and sharing through online meetings. For the sick and suffering, comfort and shelter them from anxieties, and may the peace of God dwell deeply in their hearts. We pray for your healing power to restore their bodies, minds, and spirit to good health. Lord Jesus, as we pray in your mighty name, accept our cries of petitions and deal with them according to your will. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us receive the blessing from God. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, see.